I love the countdown. It's so cute. <laughs> Fat pound dancing. You're so cute. <laughs> 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 what a way to kick off the new year. No doubt. All right. So, well, welcome to this week's and the second one of the year, the, the Groomers Cut. I am Dara Forleo, Michelle Bishop Jenkins, and you no, know, Jennifer Moles. Bishop Jenkins and Michelle Moles. Oh my gosh. Yes. Look at That's me. That's okay. Right. I want right. to be related to both of you. <laughs> All right. So, we'll start changing our names up. I want to be Michelle Bishop Jenkins. I, huh? I want to be Jennifer Michelle Bishop Jenkins. That's I what I want to be. <laughs> I want to be Mrs. Knowles and Mrs. Forleo. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Michelle oh. Forleo Bishop Jenkins. I love it. <laughs> well, we'll just all hyphenate our names all along with each other. <laughs> so, Ashley, right, likes, well Ashley likes our humor. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go through my normal spiel. Welcome to the Groomers Cut. If this is your first time joining us, please make sure we are broadcasting on seven different platforms this evening. So make sure if you're on Facebook that you grant Facebook permission so that we can see your names over in the chats and we're not just saying hey Facebook user because we like seeing your names and we know we have a lot of repeats and all of you repeats thank you guys for joining us and and listening to us as we chat every week um tonight this is one of my favorites cat is here from yes. state Illinois yay cat yeah cat's amazing <laughs> we've yes, got yes. a great group that's following us um, a couple from Australia. There was some mm -hmm. last week, and so we're we're hitting a really big target audience these these last few months. Um, but we're gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle because for all of those who are maybe new here watching in the future, um, we did have our Master Groomer Council meeting last night, and things are really rolling and moving forward with that. So. If you were not in that council and you have not joined us yet, you can be a member. Um, we do have that posted on the Pet Pro Educators, and that is right in all of the files. You can request to join and have an active seat and an active chair in that. Um, so check that out. If anybody new is watching, just shoot us a message. If you have a problem or can't find it, we'll get it over to you. And actually, and if I get this, just so, so people sure. know, it's in the yep. files section of the yes. Pet Pro Educators Facebook group. Yep. yep. Yes. So Michelle, do you want to turn over and discuss what we talked about? And then I'd like to recap after about our up and coming meetings and that, if that's okay Excellent. with you. Yes. So we kind of touched base on products and product usage. Um, we ended up um, really putting an umbrella of product, product usage. We are also dividing them into salon use and therapeutic, like veterinary uh, therapeutic use. So um, those of us who are um, trained past just salon use uh, therapeutically on products, then we do divisions for that. And we, there are going to be best practices for each of those categories as well. Uh, because we, we got a little um, caught up on the dilemma of should we use products that are only based on, oh, we have so much. An echo? Yeah, we have a huge echo. Is it me? It might be. Um, Let me try. Okay. But we had a huge issue with only using products that are labeled for use for pets. But a lot a of lot? therapeutics actually um, they include raw materials uh, for ingredients because they're additives of one sort or another. So we have actually separated that out. If you don't have the training, then you are basically a salon. Uh, environment groomer and if you do have the training you will be a veterinary uh, grade uh, environmental groomer that way so that's basically where we're at I am so thrilled of the participation on this um, even if you can't make it to every meeting it's good to, to come to some meetings or as many as you can to have your voice heard uh, we now are coming up on May as our voting day for our first block of best practices. And when we do uh, take a vote on that and make it real, if you will, uh, we will be posting that verbiage, that text onto our public Master Groomer Best Practices 
page on Facebook. Uh, and we are currently in the works of making some sort of um, website. So all that information will be there. Um, we are fleshing out the program as much as possible because I eventually want to publish this um, for clients, for groomers, for veterinarians, so that everybody's on the same page. And that's why we started the council. We wanted to standardize um, what master groomers and everybody who grooms and participates input into this text, input into these practices. So we, we have our disagreements, um, uh, but we made it, it is private so that everybody can have their voice heard. It is totally allowed to uh, not agree uh, that's what it's for, and that's why it is private at this time. Uh, there are so many groups in which everybody's just allowed to um, put in their input and a bunch of naysayers, or I think this way, and I've been grooming this way. You know what? We've all been grooming at various times. We all have our different unique experiences that we bring to the uh, Best Practices Council, and I wanted it to be a safe space where everybody can air their differences. Um, and we do semi use Oxford style mediation. Uh, so it is a really safe place to get your voice heard, to get your point across and to talk about things that are hard to talk about. So please join us as, uh, as soon as you can. If you're not joined up, uh, befriend me on Facebook and I will admit you into the private group so that you can see everything that's going on behind the scenes. I mean, I just have to say how exciting and historic this is for, I've been grooming, you know, only full time with, for the last seven years, but I've been grooming professionally every year, mostly summers and holidays while I was teaching for 40 plus years. And to see a um, science-based, you know, leadership, uh, very diverse, we have a very diverse um, master groomer council. It's not just people. It's not just the same people that you would always see speaking at conferences or something. It's a yeah. very grounded in the real industry, diverse group of people, and um, and yet all uh, outstanding uh, committed groomers. And you know we're we're you know we're bringing in science articles and we're actually looking at you know, what different people are saying about and, and the, the amount of detailed attention to questions like product labeling and, um, you know, tool usage and stuff. It, it, it's very exciting. Imagine how valuable it's going to be to have this document that you, Michelle, um, you know, have envisioned for us where we could finally have a resource in print where we can go to and say, yeah, uh, the best minds in our industry putting together um, and, and really looking at the data and, and the on the ground applications and, you know, what about anal glands? What about ear cleaning? What about which products to use? What about shaving double coats? What about, you know, and, and to have that, you know, it, it's going to, it's going to be like the Bible. It kind of is. And what I love about it most is it is a living document. As the science changes, we will be amending uh, our report, uh, amending some of the clauses, amending uh, whatever needs to be looked at and reworked uh, so that it will remain um, current and relevant to the modern day groomer, the modern day stylist and the modern day uh, esthetician. So I, I am really happy. And you know what? We have some really darn good discussions in there. It, we get stuff done because we've put away all of the emotion and all that. We truly, from our hearts, want to find what's best for the pet. And that's what we're going to put in this book. So I am I'm thrilled at how it's coming. We did move up the voting day from March uh, simply because there might be a little bit going on this time of year. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm going to throw lot. that out there. So <laughs> there's a oh, lot going I'm on right. and um, yeah. we just moved it up so that we can have enough um, meetings so that we can actually solidify a good chunk that we can absolutely pu uh, publish quickly. And so that will be happening. Did we decide in April ish? I think it's the, around so the first of I April. I just was getting ready to go over here and grab and our- wh And while you're looking that data, Melissa, what's your cat's name? She's beautiful. I know. What did I do with those? I just meant to Oh, I can't hear you, Melissa. Oh. There you go. Sorry, he muted me. <laughs> <laughs> your cat muted you? Yeah, he walked on he the keyboard. To talk. Yeah, he walks on the keyboard. It's His name's White. He's, these are, he's my grand cat. 
My daughter yeah. had a black one and a white one, and I got them when she moved to New York. So he's white uh, and his brother is black. So just so you know, when I was a child taking piano lessons from, and my mother made sure I had piano lessons, the very first recital piece I ever performed was called Kitten on the Keys. Oh, oh, well, that's it. It. Kitten on the Keys, that's what you are. Kitten <laughs> on the Keys. He is a big giant fluff and he wants to be on everything. So. He's gorgeous. Very was it the, nice. the thank I you guys? Was it the 28th, Dara? The February 21st and March 21st are our next two meetings. Then we're going to have a meeting April 25th and May 16th. May and 16th. voting will be on May 30th. Right. So deadline for okay. anybody who is in the master council voting, who you have to have your masters um, completed, that is, you have to have those in and for us by May 16th. That's the final deadline for that. If so, you want to vote. If right. you want to vote, yes. Right. Yeah, if you want to vote. So. Yes, Lisa Herbold, you are right, it is May. So we did push that out because we usually meet every three weeks, but we have um, February and March are kind of spread out. I think we go six weeks and then maybe five weeks, maybe six again. So then we have two quick back-to-back -back ones to try to and can I just say whoever our Facebook user is in the, yes. I always have to point the room, um, that said that they're honored to be in the group. I don't know who that is because I'm showing Facebook user, but let, let me just read, uh, if you can't read the chat room, it says, what are you say what we are saying is so vital that it will be our judge, job then to change the mind of the groomer to think more than just a dog is bath, dry, shave, next, bath, dry, shave, next. I love that, that's so true. There's so much more to what we do, amen, sister. Well, I, it is my hope that as we change the idea of what the relationship is between us and dogs, uh, I know a lot of people, even though we love dogs, a lot of us still take dogs for granted. Dogs can teach us so much about um, connection and love and forgiveness and patience. Um, and I would like to see that absolutely transferred back to our fellow human. Um, we are laughing. And if you want to do the opposite, get a cat. <laughs> <laughs> we are absolutely in um, in a vacuum of of misinformation and and scary yeah. time. Yeah. And everybody's trying to say this and that and the other. Um, governments and um, our workplace and our loved ones. You know, we can be pulled in several different directions. And I just want you to remember, even the people that you think may be saying the wrong thing are human beings. They are fellow humans, fellow Americans, fellow um fellow homo sapiens. And we have to remember that we are not all alike and that's still okay. And it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I believe that if you really take the love that you have for the animal and really learn patience and forgiveness and, and all that good stuff that they can teach us and take that and actually transfer it over to humans that maybe don't have all the information or maybe you don't have all the information and you need to listen more. All of us, all of us, build a bridge. I, I think I think down. that we I think you're right, Michelle. And I think that we have to understand that a lot of what we deal with in our industry is opinion. It's not fact-based, it's not science-based, it's it's opinion, it's trial and error. We do this because this is how 100 groomers have done it before us, and that's the way it's always been done. So yeah. when you introduce new information and different ways of looking at things, understand that over time, opinions change. Some people will never change their opinion. Mm -hmm. And some people will understand that we're really trying to become colleagues with each other and to make this a viable um professional choice, you know, like a choice to choose to be a groomer and not, and it not, sorry, I'm under attack here. And, <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> no, and, and, 
you know, so I think that that's a big part of it. Uh, and, you know, you have to allow people to have their opinion. And if that's where they want to stay, then you need to just understand that and say, okay, that's where you want to stay. This is the direction I'm going in. I, I want to see fact. I want to, you know, I want to see the science behind this. You know, and it is, that is grooming is both art and science. It has both yes. components. And the art part, everybody can be as individualized as they want. And I think we can share each other's art and learn from each other's art. And when there is science, I think that trying to get people to discern the difference between the art and the science is, is really one of the greatest things about um, this Master Groomers Council. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get past all of the pieces of art and get down to uh, what can be knowable in a way that can be transferable, what can be factual, because everybody needs that factual and scientific basis grounding um, in, you know, something that actually is knowable. So I, I hope that everybody in grooming will have the spirit that Michelle teaches us of, um, I love the idea of transferring what we learn from animals to people. I just think that is so wise and so good. Are um, we not animals as well? As an we organism, are indeed. We, are. we are indeed. And why would you rob another being of your sweet emotion and your sweet energy? We all need that. I think uh, it always comes to mind. Those who deserve love least need it the most. I live by that. If I see somebody that is just awful and icky, I try to mitigate the damage it's doing to my psyche, <sighs> but I try to treat them fairly. And if they won't go, then I. I, I get help because there, there's no reason. Everybody's stretched thin. Everybody's stretched thin and we all have our breaking point. Uh, and there's no reason, to, you know, you have to understand that on a human level. Put yourself in their shoes. Whatever is making them break today, you can help with. And even if they're still crackling when they leave, they'll remember that you gave them some comfort. Mm -hmm. Just give people comfort. That's what they need the most now. They're scared. They're frightened. They're hungry. They're jobless. You know, there's a lot of things that are going on right now. So try to give out love whenever you can at every opportunity. Uh, you are so wonderful. I, Christina in the chat room says, what's the suggestion if we have a groomer that grooms okay, well, but not amazing, but good enough, but doesn't care about what we're talking about, doesn't care about getting better, learning. Invite them to go somewhere else. And I know that seems harsh because I just yeah. said love one another, but yeah. literally yeah. there is somewhere where that groomer belongs better than in your salon. And not only that, you may give them the opportunity to find somewhere where they are challenged, where they do care. So, I mean, everybody should give that opportunity just because you're loving them, love them enough to let them go because they're not fitting in to your, your aura, your culture of your salon. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, they need to find somewhere uh -huh. where they do fit in, where their where their their thoughts are heard. If that's what they want to be, and I'm going to tell you right now from my mouth to your ears, there's nothing wrong with being just a regular groomer. There's a place for all of us. Just a regular groomer who brings the dog in, does kennel trims all day, and sends it back out the door. There is room for you. It's okay. But just like I wouldn't put a groomer like that in a fancy schmancy salon that only does poodle clips, uh, I certainly wouldn't put a, a wonderful finished groomer who does poodle clips in a wash and pay and go place either. So we all have our pieces. There's always somewhere for everyone. But if you have a groomer who's not fitting into your culture, sit them down and say, hey, it's really important that you fit in here. And this is what the vision is of this salon. And we all have to somehow contribute to that vision. And if you don't want to contribute, we understand I would be a great reference at another salon. So I'm not saying just, you know, throw their tools in the street and kick them out, <laughs> but absolutely facilitate them to be happier somewhere else. Sometimes you can push people to grow when you make them move out of one space and into another. When they, maybe when they're, they're not they're forced taking, to not look at it. You know, right. When they're forced to look at where they are, you know, and where they stand, sometimes they have to, you know, make that kind of decision. And sometimes it takes putting them out of that um, complacent behavior and making them be responsible for their own growth. 
Because we can't be responsible for other people's growth. We can provide things for them, but they have to do, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. You cannot Sorry, be apparently more I have to groom right now. <laughs> you can't be more excited, more enthusiastic about someone else's grooms than they are. Right. You know what I mean? You, they have to meet you in the middle. They have to meet you there. So it's kind of yeah. like kicking the teenager out of the house. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Ashley said that she, um, she also was in a salon where people were like that. And it, and she just took control of it and, and she left too. And because if you aren't comfortable in the culture of the place that you work, the same thing. Right now, there is such uh, a diversity of grooming businesses that are out there. And um, there are so many um, more dogs than there are groomers right now. So you will always be able to find a place where the culture fits you. Um, you know, there are salons like mine that spend all day long trying to be the absolute best at what we can be. And we're hand scissoring and we're breed standering and we're getting a lot, uh, a lot of purebred dogs from the city driving out to the suburbs to us. So we can, because we do, you know, Legotos correctly and Spanish water dogs correctly and, and Irish water spaniels correctly, you know, and people uh, bring, uh, you know, corded dogs to us and hand straps and everything because we do them correctly. And that kind of a salon is a great place for somebody who wants to learn and grow. Personally, I think one of the best things to look for in a salon, if you're going to try to find the right culture is, and you, you love to learn, like what we've been talking about, is go to a place where they will actually make a continuing education part of your job. They'll support you in terms of giving you the time to do it. They'll help you get certified. They'll help you to have time to go to conferences, compete if you want to. You know, uh, whoever you work for, if that's what you wanted to expand yourself into, they should support you or you can find, I'm sure, a salon that will. Absolutely. There, there are a lot of salons, though, that don't. That's true. In that. but there so are so is, many that do and they're getting there are more and more. Yes. And yeah. I am myself have been the wind of change in plenty of them myself. So <laughs> you can make a change if you are that enthusiastic enthusiasm and happiness and joy at doing what you do i'm telling you it spreads it spreads it's contagious that's what i want to be contagious mm -hmm. i want that i want joy to be contagious and if you are so into what you're doing and you really believe it even some of the curmudgeons are going to go well what is she doing her her dogs look different she gets more yeah. tips than me and you know her clients really love her so i mean it, it, you can build on just your confidence and enthusiasm as well yeah. if you're if you go into a place like that maybe they were looking for someone to spark them be the spark i was just about to say somebody just posted in one of the comments that videoing somebody grooming to show them because maybe they're not seeing it clearly but taking a video or or taking pictures mm -hmm. and then pointing out or, or okay, critiquing. I'm going to I'm going to say this lightly. You have to do that in the right spirit or it could be no. taken like, Oh my I God, she's throwing my things. And so, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That is, that, <laughs> that's, but it that, is a good that, teaching tool. It is a good teaching tool. Yeah. If they, if they give consent, just to say, have hey, is it okay if I take a picture of your finish so we can go over some of your scissor work? Absolutely. That's allowed, especially if you're the manager or the owner and you're like, hey, I really want to help you improve, you know, try this technique instead of that technique or, you know, try combing them out before blowing them out. And that'll really help get the curl out. You know, if you don't want to hand fluff, there's a million ways you can approach that in a nice way, in a loving way. Yeah. Uh, so and then some people will just take it terrible and say, oh, my God, they were so terrible to me. They were taking pictures of my groom and telling me how terrible I was. So right. I mean, it's all in your perception. If they're not yeah. ready to grow, you can't make them grow. And Ashley says that she's working alone now and not have, glad not to deal with other people. But you're not alone, Ashley. You have all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely have a little you bit. You still of have a larger community. And, you know, that's the, one of the good things about this pandemic that is has been forever, I think, is going to forever change us. I think we are going to be more connected as an industry than ever before because everybody has started Zooming. And I don't think that's going to ever go away. I think we're going to be able to be more connected to each other and form more associations of interest, you know, have a, a specialty 
uh, of interest, like people who just like to, I, I don't know, do creative and coloring or people that are hand stripping and or they or they want to do, um, you know, cat grooming or, you know, butt rabbit grooming or something, you know, form uh, connections <laughs> and, and find those other groomers and build family, even if you're by yourself. That's I think something like more than half the groomers in the country are still grooming by themselves. Isn't that probably There's anecdotally a true? There's a lot of in, in call, yeah. house call. There's a lot of, I know also groomers who take their vans and just do like subdivisions. They'll go there for yeah. a day have everybody come to them, come to them yeah, so, I mean, it, there's a million cabillion ways of doing it um, there are also salons that are still functional and working uh depending on where your area is so uh yeah it's it's happening a lot and i think because we've been forced to talk to each other uh like this instead of just being sequestered in our salon and being tired at the end of the day uh that we are having more of a fellowship uh, we have um more and more people are connecting and knowing that we are still a, a sister and brotherhood a fellowship in grooming lisa herbold is a teacher of grooming at a vocational at, a, at a, a, a local community college and she says that she uses pictures and videos to have her students be able to see things about their groom that they don't really see just by looking at the dog sometimes mm -hmm. that's great yeah when my girls get it right uh what I'm because I can see everybody from my table. And when I see somebody that has a just a has a nice shape from a dog that was so scruffy, I call everyone over. I'm like, come here, come here, come here to my table. And they all run over and they're like, what? I'm like, look at that dog. <laughs> and then we all clap and yay. So I mean, everybody gets kudos when they're doing a good job. It makes them want to do better. You know, they work harder. That's great. Very good. All right. Dara, you're going to tell everybody where you are? Dara, uh, tell everybody where you are. Well, we told them last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, we are still in Tampa. So I, I was just getting ready to introduce you now, and you're walking away. We're, we're Wait, actually I'm a little sorry. chilly. I, no, no, no. I was talking to Latifah because I was oh, gonna, okay. I'm like, we're sorry. On briefly, so I'm going to turn. Let me know if the echo did it. It must have gone away, but I'm going to take it off so she can pop in here really quick. Oh, I love what Nicole said. Nicole said that she has her students doing a grooming journal with before and after pics, and then they go over it a couple of days later. That's a great idea. Love that. You got to jump I in here. Like, I, I, was at there. I just want to let everybody know Ooh. that on January 10th, I've got an all day precision sharp day. Uh, it's all about skin and coat and behavior. So that's like a four class day on January 10th. And then after the following weekend, we have the skin. Hey, wait a minute, that's this Sunday, right? It's coming, yes. This it's coming Sunday. Sunday. How can people sign up for that, Michelle? They go to Precision Sharp Presents online. And I think we I can put it, I'll have uh, Dara put it I in can the, post uh, it for you. Yep. She'll put the uh, link in there. So uh, this coming on the 10th will be um, the Precision Sharp Presents, uh, sponsored by them. And um, also the following weekend, we're actually going to have a whole skin and coat summit. And it, yeah, will be, awesome. it will be two solid days with so many speakers. Barbara Bird, Christine Pearson. Who else is doing this? Yeah, so many great instructors yeah. are going to be taking place. And it will all be all skin and coat. It's the first one of its kind. Be there, be square. <laughs> the, the, the website for signing up for that is Pet Coat Ed, as in education, summit.com. Pet Coat Ed Summit.com. And that, and that is going to be an amazing, never before in the history of our industry, two days of the big names yeah. in all skin and coat. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to grab that one too. Is there something on the 17th as well? That's the skin and coat. And then, oh, I get the next Sunday free. I don't even know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> so. There you go. All right. So they're all posted for you now. Okay, perfect. And oh. Ashley is all out of money. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. There's so many things out there I now. Know. Everybody's going to be running out of money because they're not going to know what to do. 
So for everyone here and those watching, I know we don't get to do this often and it's not often that I'm with other instructors outside, but this is Latifa Mina and she is part of the holistic school that we are creating. She was actually my first online instructor and um, Latifa is actually an animal communicator and a pet psychic. So her courses are with us and she is putting together um, a couple courses for, couple. you tell them. A couple. Well, you're doing some seminars, but you're for our new program that we are getting ready to launch in the next month to be a, what did we call it? A um, master holistic rumor. Was it, um, was it a master holistic rumor? And holistic arts, I think it was. Holistic yeah. arts, yeah. Yeah. Holistic yeah. Art. yeah. Because I think that encompasses everything that you offer. Yeah. I think that's really awesome. So, I think so really it'll cool. offer Latifah's. She's got two courses in there. Um, Melissa, there's a couple of hers with the aromatherapy and the pet massage for for groomers to learn those skills for working in and in integrating those into our school and teaching and into our everyday grooming. And we put feline in there too, didn't we? I think there uh, is a feline. I, I think, think there is. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was, a, I don't know if it was level one and two or if it was like, they're like, like, they're like snippets. Yeah. 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 It was snippets of all, all four. Then it's a recipe for greatness. For <laughs> greatness. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. A sprinkle of this, a sprinkle of that, right? Wow, and bippity boppity boo. <laughs> you know, that's me. I'm bippity boppity boo for sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. So, um, Christina was asking about that website for the Pet Code Ed Summit. And actually, if you look in the comments uh, above you there, Christina, it, um, uh, Dara Port posted the link to the website, the Pet Code Ed Summit .com. Um, you know, I would like to hear from your holistic teacher. What would be an example of a holistic grooming practice? Well, I think a lot of groomers miss the communication piece of what they do. And it's very important that, I, again, I think a lot of people don't understand. Animals can understand everything you talk about. So they understand your tone, your vibration, your words, your language, and it's really a communication piece. So as we teach animal communication, whether it's for this industry or professionals who want to do this or for people who are just. Ooh. Oh, we got stuff. Piece about it all <laughs> is that. Extra, yeah. yeah, sorry. We got bad internet here. Yeah. We're Explanation um, about what you're doing, why you're doing it, what's to be expected is a gigantic piece I think that a groomer misses when they're doing their grooming. Whether it's canine or feline, I think all industries um, could do much better in incorporating a lot more communication with the animals. So there's kind of a one way and a two way when we do communication. A two way is where you actually hear them back to where you're actually receiving information, you're having the conversation, they're replying, and you're actually having that two way conversation. And a lot of people feel that they just don't, unless they're doing that, it isn't successful. But that's sort of a myth because the more that you talk with your animals and you share with them, okay, you're on my table, you know, we're going to get groomed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Your job is to relax. I promise I'll show you what I'm doing. We'll talk about everything that's happening. It gives them a piece of comfort. I have my own personal vet who went through the nine month professional course through our through, vet. Through the, yeah, actually. our vet. Yeah, their vet too. <laughs> in, the in, academy. in New Hampshire. Yeah. And um, <laughs> she, um, she has seen a huge shift and change in her practice after doing, and she doesn't really tell her own clients about it as much as she uses it with her own animals and the animals that come in on her vet practice. Uh -huh. So her whole staff is like, now yeah, you're going to feel a little prick. We're going to take a little blood. This is what we're doing. And 90% of her animals settle right down. They're much more calmer. They're much more receptive. They're much more 
connected instead of in panic and anxiety mode, they're much more available to work with. And she's seen a huge shift. So it goes across the board, whatever industry that you're in, whether you're a breeder, a groomer, a handler, a vet, if you do this professionally training animals, or the horses or dogs or whatever that happens to be, there's a huge piece for the animal communication to let those animals know what we're doing, why we're doing it, what to expect, what's the expectation from them and giving them a comfort. I mean, if I just got thrown on a table and somebody was working all over me, I'd be like, what are you gonna do? You know, so having that information is huge. Um, I think that so many people feel that animal communication is, I guess, specialized or a gift. Um, and it's an ability. It's no different than you learning how to be a CPA or an attorney or a fireman or anything else that you want to do. Now, not everybody's cut out to be a fireman or policeman and not everybody's cut out to do this. So it's, it really goes to speak to, does it pique your interest? Does it fit for where you are? And as long as you become open enough to say, the hardest part is, okay, this is real, it's working, it does exist. And number two, I can do it. Those are the hardest hurdles to get by. Um, everybody has had intuition. There's been some point in time in your life where somewhere in your gut, you knew something, but you don't know how you know it. You're like, man, I knew that, but I, you didn't know how. That intuition is the part that everybody's built with, and that's the ability that we just take, we build on, we build a baseline, and you get to learn how that communication works for you. I think the biggest part of doing animal communication is there's no right or wrong. This isn't, this isn't anything that's a right or wrong process. It's really about how does it fit for you? How does it work for you? How do you receive the information? And even if you're not receiving information back, once you're at least sharing information with the animals on your table that you're working with, that you're interested with, you're going to see a shift in their demeanor and a shift in, okay, thanks for telling me. You may not hear it, but you'll experience it. Most of the time, the animals are super receptive. Now, animals can understand everything you talk about and everything you say, but that doesn't mean they have that they don't have selective hearing because they, they do have selective hearing. There's no doubt about it. So mm -hmm. I think in a holistic approach, as we learn about teaching holistic grooming and creating a different kind of groomer, communication is huge. You cannot not do that part of it. It's, it's, it's no different than breathing. It's a part of the language. Everybody on this planet communicates in one way or another. So learning the communication piece is just another tool in the tool shed. It's, it's, it doesn't replace anything. It doesn't take over anything. It's just another tool that gives you an ability to have the best grooming experience more comfortable for the animal and building a better connection relationship. The other you know, thing it's, about it's, it's real, isn't it really true that if you, even if you aren't commute, like if you're the kind of groomer that, you know, you just get the dog on the table, do it, do your thing. And you're maybe even talking to colleagues and not the dog. Isn't it true that you're still communicating to that animal, whether you're yes. talking to that animal or not, you're still communicating. And maybe what you're communicating to them is not a good message. So I, so just the well, idea that you're being very intentional about what your message is to them, right? Well, to yeah. me, if well, that's another about, part of this. Yeah. You, you could that's sit, another part. Can have their hair done at a salon, at several salons. The best right. salons you feel the most comfortable in are the ones that are paying attention to you, having a conversation, exactly. fixing right. your hair, yes. touching you gently. Those are the ones you like. All of us have been to a nail tech, a hair salon or whatever, where they're talking amongst themselves and they're barely doing your stuff and you just feel like a commodity. If right. you recognize the animal as a sentient being, as it is, it's just shaped differently than you. Right. It's, it's like you're above the dog. Sure. Oh, but the other, piece, the other piece to this whole thing is even if you're not verbally communicative, they feel your energy. They see your aura colors they know what you're upset about or if you're upset they're very connected to you so you may be talking to a colleague 
oh my God, I can't believe so-and-so did this or my husband did that or my wife did that or whatever it happens to be. And you're bitching about something and they're feeling that energy. They're going to feel that. So you need to be present with the animal that you're working with. Be present in the moment with them because you're asking them to be present with you. Yes. Yes. That yeah. yes, that's right. You can't ask your animal on the table to be present with you when you're like, now wait and be here and do this. Yeah. It, it's not going to work that way. You got so, some great, you got some great fans in the comment room. Terry Hinkle says <laughs> that this is a huge pet peeve about uh, people who just yell at their dogs or try to yeah. control them and terrify them it's, instead of you know trying to build a relationship with them yeah. Yeah. connection they know and if you're in a bad mood they're going to know you're in a bad mood if you're angry frightened scared happy joyful stressed. they know all oh, stressed absolutely mm -hmm. it's another part of the seminars that we've added into this mm -hmm. about understanding and you being more self-aware of what your energy is so when you walk up to that table and you're working with the dog, whether you're at the bath or you're on the grooming table, what is the energy that you, you know, you may be pissed about something else totally unrelated about what you're doing. That animal doesn't know that he feels the anger. Yeah. He feels the upset. So it's about being present with your dog right then and there putting your crap aside. There's tons of exercises that we can do to help you take all the junk that you're worried about, set it aside, be present when you're working, be with the animal and give them the due time and respect as you're asking them to give to you. And then when you leave, then go do whatever you want, vent whatever it is you need to do. But while you're working with that animal, be respectful. They, you're asking them and you need to be present with them. You will find that you will get so much more better behavior, attitudes. Yes. Now, that's not to say you're not going to have those two or three or few that are like just in panic mode and and are just going to be difficult no matter what. But for the most part, it's going to be a better experience for you and the animal. And I think a lot of people miss that. They, they just expect an animal to come in and fit to that mold of just be, don't, don't have feelings, just be right here, do what I tell you. And they're frightened to death and they just don't, they don't get it. They just don't get it. So I, I, you got some people in the, in the chat room now I, that are saying I'm things like, she's going to be your new soul sister. And <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. Yeah. The, the dogs, <laughs> you know, the name of my shop is love for dogs and it's yeah. not, you know, um, torture for dogs, as I tell people that want me to do torturous things. It, you know, if, if you really are what your mission is, if you have your right. mission, you know, central in your mind, we are, we are there for them and we should right. be focused on them and talking and to them. I love that that is what holistic okay. grooming is. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Jen, you're correctly, you can't fake it. So Jen made a comment about your animals you know, yeah. it's when I when I tell all my clients and I'm actually here showing a horse in Tampa this week, the uh, last couple of weeks, and I'm starting to do some readings and I'm like, look, you can't say one thing and do another or feel one thing and do another. Say what you mean and mean what you say. And if if you don't know, you don't know. It's just if you're you just have to learn how to be vulnerable with them. And that doesn't mean that you're not in control, but it means that there's a connection piece. You're earning respect and trust as you're asking them to respect and trust you. And it's a two way street. And the more information you give them. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be on the table about 30 minutes or 40 minutes. I got to do this. We got to do that. I know you don't like this, but you talk to them as if they're just human. Now, look, if I don't do your nails, then they're going to grow and then they're going to split and then they're going to have infections. And then this isn't going to go well because you're going to be hurting. I got to do this. We got to do that. So please be patient. I'm going to try to do my best when you're honest and upfront with them and not giving a bunch of crap. They're much more able to be more willing to like, okay, all right, I got to hate this. Try to do the nail, but some of them have their own baggage and their own garbage. And we just have to recognize what their fears are, where they're not okay. And it's not about babying them through that fear. It's about you being able to say, 
I know you don't like this. Trust me. I know this is unpleasant. I know you don't like it. Hang tight with me. We're going to get it done as soon as we can. This is going to be, I just need to make sure that you're healthy and clean. I don't want you walking around with infections. I don't, it's just, you just explain it in a better way and you, and you just be honest with them. A lot of them are much more receptive to that kind of information than mommy wants this done or daddy wants this done, or look, this is about keeping you healthy. I go to go to the dentist and I hate it. And there's things that I hate too, but I got to do it because it keeps me healthy. Your job is to be as healthy as you can be. I mean, you chose to be a dog. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. This is a part of you know, it. Um, I, teach a, I teach a PowerPoint uh, seminar called the Human Dog Coevolution, where I focus on the science. Mm -hmm. And there is actually total science to back up what you're saying. They, they've, they've proven how dogs read our yeah. face muscles. They yeah. actually have also proven scientifically that dogs have um, emotion matching. They have empathetic states where they yeah. can actually feel what you feel. Um, it, and it may not be a literal understanding word for word, but communication is so important because they will completely read that and then they match their states emotionally to where yes. you are. That is a wonderful thing about dogs. Not so much with cats, you. I have found, by the oh, way. <laughs> cats, every single animal breed and species understands every single word you say. They understand it. It's now again, they have selective hearing. <laughs> so um, I may be talking to you and totally talking about a topic you're not even interested in. So they may just tune you off and tune you out like, oh, good God. OK, whatever. Keep talking. So they may do that. I mean, they have the personalities just like humans do. But a lot of them are much more willing to be engaged in a truthful conversation um, and I guarantee they uh, they know they are t most of the time 20 steps ahead of you when <laughs> I mean I had clients today I had a dog on the phone today was like okay you're getting are we getting a new dog and she's like oh I talk about it all the time teasing my husband I said well they think you're getting a new dog so they're very aware of your energy your intent your intention that you have creates the energy so when you intend and you set the intent to have a really peaceful groom and you're calm and breathing and you're grounding in yourself, boom, it's much easier because they can feel you. They, they're they just very scientific. I mean, they're very, they're just so much more ahead of us. They're intuitive and they, they are a walking emotion. Uh, and yes, they, they are. Yeah. Yeah. And there's <clears throat> some of those animals can come in your table and go, hey, done this business, go ahead, do what you need to do. But the ones, and those are easy, but the ones that are having a problem with it is where the communication comes through. We help them. We, yeah. we guide them. I'm not going to baby them to tell them, like, everything's okay. I'm going to explain what we're doing and recognize that they may have an issue or struggle, but I'm going to try to help them through that. I don't want to sugarcoat it to make everything okay. That's not the job. The job is to be open and upfront. So be I, love yeah. I love what Lisa said. Lisa said that she does her tasks in the nasty. same order every time so that the dogs can learn what comes next as they come there. And yeah, and Kat said that, um, you know, we can't get around it. We can't get over it. We can't go under it. We just have to go through it. That's true. Yeah. I think a lot of us that actually work with uh, dogs that are fearful or aggressive have learned those, those tenets. Yes. And we yes. live by them because that's how we do our work. You know, yes. I, I specialize in those behavioral dogs and mm -hmm. you have to do the same thing. And not only that, uh, for those of you who have bathers, I also stay with them from the moment they come in the front door till the moment they leave. I'm the one that bathes them, that touches them, that changes them in their kennel, that does everything. So that they, they are married to my energy. If right. you have a dog like that and you're passing right. it to a bather and then somebody else dries it and then it gets on your oh, table, yeah. your dog's like, right. <laughs> Good and point. You, yes. know, you have to have that sustained calmness and they have right. to be able to rely on you. Your energy is huge. And so another piece that I think a lot of people miss is the self-recognition of where you are in that moment. What is your energy like? 
you may be fine. Oh, I'm fine. I'll be okay. But if you're still angry about something or upset about something or hurting, if you're physically hurting in the body, you may be sick in the body. You may be hurting. Um, they understand and feel that um, they're super empathic. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, why are you hurting? Are you okay? Maybe you're not okay. Maybe you can't handle this. Maybe I shouldn't trust you because something's going on with you. Mm -hmm. So being very upfront and telling, yeah, my back hurts, but I'm okay. I'm right here. I'm going to take care of you. I promise if something happens, I'm not okay. I'll tell you, I'll have somebody else who can step in. It's just being there in the moment and that greeting them and taking them through the process helps them to get, like you said, attached to your energy, your availability, and they're not switched between 60 different people in the process. Right. And if they are, explain <laughs> now we're doing bath jill's going to take over the groom process i only do the bathing thanks for being so great jill's going to help you on the table now she's going to be the one that's going to help you and trim you and cut you and we're going to get you dried and mom's on their way they're going to be here in another hour or so so let's get all beautified and blah 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 so as long as they get some information and you're communicating it'll go much better for them i have so many animals that get a little fearful about going and it's it's not the fear of being there it's the process it's like god i just can't wait to get through this freaking process and i just want to get home back to my mom it's like they love it when they're done because they feel good but it's the actual it's like going to the dentist i just want to sit in the chair and give me happy gas it's mm -hmm. like just tell me when we're done so changing that experience to where we walk them through it make them a part of it we're vulnerable we're there we're with them and communicating makes it better for them to go through that experience so i think animal communication can be viewed in in many different ways it's i'm i'm we're striving to tell everyone and educate people that this is another tool in the toolbox it doesn't replace anything it doesn't replace the vet care it mm -hmm. doesn't replace Anything that you're used to doing, it's in addition to the aromatherapy. It's in addition to the education we receive. It's just another tool that helps you have a better experience and a better connection to the animal. And they trust you more. They learn to trust you and they learn to, to believe and accept and be a little more vulnerable to the best they can. And it's a gigantic piece that no matter what industry you're in, we're getting better at it. We really are. I mean, we animal communicators 10 years ago were looked at taboo, magical magicians, you know what. And now it's really becoming a part of all the industries. I was very surprised at the horse show today to find people that are doing this. People are doing energy work. They're doing electronic pulsation. They're doing animal communication. So it's not, it's across the board in the animal world and kingdom that more and more and more of us are accepting all of the tools and using them all for the betterment of the animal companions. And I, I, I just, that's our goal. That's a part of why I joined with Dara and do. Yep. There, there we go. Because it's an education piece to allow people to know there's another tool it's no matter how you end up using it, it creates a better connection with the animal and a better environment and a better relationship. And that's the goal. So that it's not just do what I say, say what I do. You're building the trust and the communication. So I'm, I'm honored to kind of be with Derek and be in the academy and be a part of that. And I'm glad to be able to do some of these seminars for these programs that we're doing. I realize it's not for everybody and that's okay. <laughs> But for those that are willing to kind of learn about it and and are more interested, there's tons of information um, and you can do A to Z. It's, it just depends on what you like and where your interest is and what you're open to, basically. And I just want to say that those of you who aren't interested, for anyone here or anyone who should view this later, anyone who doesn't think that energy work is for them or whatever, think about you're losing out you are actually losing out on the the sweet beauty that the dog can communicate you're missing out so if you could make an effort to add communication enhance the communication of uh the dogs that you work with every day i'm telling you they can heal you 
they can heal you in ways that you don't even know yet. In yeah, that's very true. So yeah. I think I don't think that it's even uh, ancillary to do energy work or to do um, emotion work with your dogs or communication. I think it's ne it's a necessary part of what it we is. Absolutely. I love it what, is. I love what and Terry said. We need to look beyond the behavior often created by somebody before us. Dogs aren't born bad. The behaviors are created. Uh, yeah, amen. That's very, hi, hi. That's very true. And a can lot I, of can times. I ask you, can I ask you a yeah. question, Lativa? Please, do you sure. do you feel like do you feel like that they they come with baggage just like people come with baggage? Yes. Uh -huh. um, yes and so, and yes. so we need to to help them work through that stuff because a lot of times groomers get dogs that behave badly because they've been in poor situations for grooming, whether it was groomer related, owner owner related, or pet related. You know, the pet just reacted poorly. Uh -huh. So here's here's the issue. The first question is that we have to ask is, do they want to let go of that? Right. And not assume that they are willing to change or mm -hmm. heal or be different. But having a conversation of, you know, I get that happened in the past. Um, there's a better way to be that where you don't have to hold and carry the baggage. If you're interested, uh, we can talk about it. We can show you how to do that. It's, it's a respect thing of any animal I've come across. The first question is we'd like to show you a different or a better, healthier way to exist. Some are very interested and some are like, don't even touch me. This is the way I am. And then you just do the best you can. That's rare, but most of the time, a lot of the animals, and I have dogs, cats, horses, camels, tigers. I've got a raccoon. I mean, I've got, you name it, I've got clients. And some are very willing to heal and some aren't. And right. it's their own specific reasons of why they want to do that. But those that are willing to heal, then we can offer other options and energy work and other different types of things to show them new experiences, better experiences while they're doing this. Um, there's, what do they say? One bad apple ruins the whole, the whole bushel. And that's very true because once, and again, some animals have a bad experience, boom, it's an impact and it's an imprint. And that's all they know from that point forward. Some animals have an imprint and they're like, you know what, that happened, but whatever. I'm letting it go. It's in the past. I'm going to go back to being who I was. They're all different, and they all relate differently to experiences that they have. So we have to be sure to use every every animal that comes to us that's had baggage, and that, who hasn't? Who in this life hasn't had baggage? Um, I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, you know what, we can do it differently so that it's going to be easier for you and more um, um, less stressful for you. And we offer them a different way. And most of the time, they're very willing to make that shift and change, whether it takes a month or a year. They're willing to try to go through that process to do that. Now, that's not to say you don't get that one every now and then. It's like screw you. And <laughs> that have been mishandled so yes. many times right. that it's a given. They're just like, it's no, a given. this is how we're going to do this, and yeah. it's just a struggle for them. And it's heartbreaking, but we just get through it. But we also have to remember, as an animal communicator in my field, um, it is not my job to fix every animal that comes along. It, that's impossible. My job is to offer the opportunities for the human and for the animal to say, there's a different and a better way we can help you heal. If that's what you want, if that's what you're, if that's an option for you, I can show you a better way. But when an animal says, leave me alone, I'm done. This is how I am. We do the best we can do. We cannot, we cannot change every animal's perspective out there and we can't change some of them are so uh, broken in some senses that they're just broken and they just can't heal they choose not to and 
for a whole other sense of reasons, I honor that. I respect that. I allow that animal to have that journey that he needs to have to learn the life lesson he needs to learn. It's very difficult as a human because as humans, we want to fix everything. And we want to fix every animal that comes along and fix them all. And no, 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 we can do it this way. And sometimes our life lesson is to learn. We're just compassionate. We do the best we can do, but we just can't heal and fix everything. And that becomes a very difficult thing in some instances. Mm -hmm. So recognizing, um, I agree, recognizing that those who want the help and the baggage that comes along, absolutely. It's a process. And the biggest part is if you as the groomer can just be, hey, you know what? Cool. I, you got a problem? Who doesn't have a problem in the world? Okay, great. You know what? We'll work around it. We'll figure it out one step at a time. And you just do it easy. You're just communicating. I get that. And if, if one time as they learn to come on your table and they start to trust you a little more, okay, maybe today we can work on this. And then now you're being able to clip an area you couldn't clip before, or maybe they're allowing you to touch some place that you couldn't touch before. You know, I think a lot of people just want to fix everything in one fell swoop and you're missing the part that the dog or the animal needs to process. Right. Okay. That wasn't so bad. Next time, maybe I can do this. Next time I can do this. The problem is the owners. It's getting the humans people on board that look, if you'll be patient with me, I think we can get him from A to Z or A to M, but you've got to give me a little time and be patient. So not only are you dealing with the, the animal, you've got to allow the human to be on board. Give me some time. Let him learn me. Let him trust me. Let him understand what's happening. Give me a few weeks or a couple months. Let's see how we progress. Let's see how we go. So sometimes it's not the animal's issue. It's the human issue. And you guys can all take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as Dara, as we wrap up our hour together, I thank you for sharing because uh, Christina was asking your website, uh, Latifah, is animalscantalk.com. Yeah. Animals but also, can talk yep. But also, Dara, tell them about the, the course that they can take with you. Um, yeah, well, the they're just coming back. So we will yeah. have some groomer friendly abbreviated communication and energy classes yep. uh, and some hour long seminars that we're just going to yeah. be launching probably by the end of the month. Yep. And, and that will be um, wholepetnh.com. Yep. Um, yep. yep. And then I've got a, I do have a specific nine month professional animal communication course. Yeah. Takes you, and it's under through the academy. It's all under the academy. You earn a diploma in animal communication. And we go from basic to, I don't even know what the world I'm getting into, to if you want to be the professional, you can. We talk about a basic, there's two advanced class, a death and dying, boundaries and ethics. And then a, a three day, uh, three 18 hours of professional. So it really does the gamut of teaching you how to do this. And it's all online. That's the greatest thing. It doesn't matter where you are. And we practice every week and we go through it. So there's a lot of different options for a lot of different people, depending on whether they're incorporating this into grooming or others, other ways. But there's tons of information out there. And you're more than anybody's more than welcome to get a hold of Dara. Get a hold of me and give you more information. Yeah. Walk you through where you are, what you're thinking about, answer any questions. Absolutely. Kat asked, yes, it, the, her diploma program is nine months online. Mm -hmm. And then there is an option. We kind of, we have a, the final three days is in class. Um, we've always had that in New Hampshire yeah. and we were able to do that also online. Yeah. But so far, all the classes mm -hmm. that have, taken have all come to new hampshire yeah they all and want to fly to new hampshire and eat lobster i don't get it but whatever <laughs> 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 i do the final three days yeah. in new hampshire and then we do a little graduation ceremony for the completion of the nine months yeah. and go yeah. to dinner and and yeah. do yeah. a diploma presentation yeah and so it's and i can give you names in of past students and phone numbers, you're more than welcome to contact any of the past students that have gone through the course. Literally, it's a Monday, Wednesday for an hour. You get, uh, a few, I think, three videos, four videos for the week to watch. And you watch them at your own leisure. They're 45 minutes to send me an essay on it. Some extracurricular reading and stuff. So, But pretty much, again, there's no right or wrong to it. It's just about 
the course is designed to help you learn your baseline, how it works for you, and a lot of other tools. It's not just animal communication. It's a lot of metaphysical. What does energy work? What are the stones, aromatherapies? What are the other things you need to do to be successful, and especially when you start getting blocked or you get stuck? What is it you need to move forward? So there's a lot of information. So. Yeah. So, Kat, yeah, you don't have to come to New Hampshire if you don't. No, that's all right. We can do it online. We can do it online. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you guys are going to want to do. So, we can email Perfect. you a picture of a lobster. There yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you it's can nice eat it like before you eat it. Right. <laughs> I've done that too. Trust me. I'm like, oh, oh my God, thank you. She does. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice there. to meet everybody. Thank yes. you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like I need to have to back to the school again. Yeah. I usually every now and again it's like Latifa, can you just come to the school just mm -hmm. just to come? <laughs> She's like, right. sure, I'll come up for a week. Why would I go to New Hampshire? <laughs> she doesn't like coming in the winter. No, that's out. Yeah. Well, yeah. This, that was fascinating. Thank you. So, yeah, well, it went longer. I thought we were going to be a short abbreviated, but, no, but no. we tried to get her on last week and we kind of, we did our thing and she was late coming back from the horse show. So it worked out well. Well, I'm glad that you made it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yep. It is. So I will be back home next week and safe no journey, Sarah. You, I'm sure yeah. we'll do this again. Safe travel, uh, Sarah. Yep. So anybody has any questions, reach out to us. I hope we got everybody's comments in there because there was a lot tonight, but please let us reach out to us. Hey, and go put your goals in. I'm monitoring that. <laughs> um, I'm watching. I see there is Melissa made a post about uh, for the document. Yeah. The goals they're, they're, yeah. yeah they're and downloadable. She so they can was do the only one. Yeah, Angie Coates was the only one. So I want to see some more goals in there, whether they're personal, professional. You don't have to give us a lot, but come June, I'm revisiting this and we're going to re talk about this. So, yeah, we'll my goal to fill out the goal paper. What is the goal? Explain it again for Christina. Yeah. Uh, Christina, last week we talked about uh, just how do we set goals and and getting in boosting ourselves and and setting instead of New Year's resolutions, we're we're doing goals. So check it out. It was uh, last week's show, and I posted on the Pet Pro Educators um, just in there. There is a goal. I think it should be in the announcements and just, I wanted to see what people wanted to do for goals and how we can help you hit those goals in the next six months. Groomer Jen, I uh, wanted to get a mentor on the, the, the tracks for IPG. I'd be happy to help you, uh, uh, Jen, just yeah, felt my fellow Jennifer. Um, mm. So give, um, you know, can you email me at groomersguide at gmail.com and I'll be happy to talk with you, help you out. Can I just put a little uh, a little uh, bug in everybody's ear? I just found out that um, in March uh, I will be doing a uh, a day with sponsored by Precision Shark, and it will be on um, more metaphysical. Um, we're going to do pet massage, and I'll go over uh, feline and canine. And I will also be talking about, I am a level two Reiki master. I'm a light worker. Um, so uh, I will be talking about energy work, crystals, crystal grids, even touching on feng shui and just ways to um, center and ground yourself and to communicate energetically, not necessarily audibly, you know, or vocally that you have to always be talking, but um and so for those of you that have an interest in those types of adjunct, what I consider adjunct therapies to the other things that we put in our tool bag, that will be a really great intro to those other additional, uh, I consider all of that therapeutics. So it is made of pure sunshine. 
And I can't think of a better person to learn energy work off of than her. She is amazing. Uh, I, spent, I spent actual personal time with her over some periods of time. And uh, I, I, I bow down to her, her will to shine in the face of a storm. Uh, she is pretty amazing. So. And um, Kat was asking um, about, was it Kat? No, who was asking about the go, the link to your, Michelle, to your Precision Sharp Presents, your Precision Sharp Presents. Both of you, are you can get it at Precision Sharp Presents. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think they've announced mine yet. We're still, we're still getting all the bits and pieces together, but... For those that have an interest in in a more metaphysical aspect, I will be touching on, especially with oils, massage, all that kind of stuff. So it'll be an all day. We'll talk about botanicals. Yeah. So it'll be fun. It, this is my jam. You know, this yeah. is where I feel like this is what I do. Such where a I hip thing, Melissa. I am. I am. I used to have a client that used to refer to me as the granola groomer. She used to tell her friends, go to my groomer. She's a granola. She's crunchy tree hugger, but you'll love her. And so that's, and then I had somebody call me the oily groomer and then that kind of stuck. And, and so, but that's my thing. I love all that. I was so thrilled to see Latifa tonight. That was oh, awesome. Yes. Yes. Hey, Dara, Dara, can you be it? bowing over here? Yes. Dara. Thank you, Latifa. Dara, instead of the pet code at summit link, can you post the precision sharp presents? Dot com link. Can you post um, that? Oh, I thought I just did that. No, you put in the pet coded summit. Um, yeah. Oh, I did the precision jar also. And the pet coded oh, summit is in two weeks, and that's going to be awesome too. Yeah, that'll be a great one. And I'm, I, I'm oh, doing. Yeah, sure uh, Michelle, what are you doing in the pet uh, summit? Michelle, what are you doing in the pet? Michelle, what are you doing in the? I'm doing. Uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, Sarah. I'm doing. <laughs> I know. I I'm doing, I'm doing uh, a modified allergy, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, at the end of the first mm -hmm. day, and at the end of the the second day, mm -hmm. I have a new class oh that I'm putting together. It's called um, uh, putting theory into practice. We all go to the, all these seminars and learn little pieces of information, and then we get back and we're so excited. Then we're like, "Oh, how do I do that? How do all I right. use that? What order do I do it in?" I'm going to cover that. I'm going to put all those pieces together for everyone. So it's a brand awesome. new class. That yes. You Is class. that something you want me to add? Sure. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> only, it's, here. it's actually putting it. Well, that class is actually going into the third level, the third tier of the pet esthetician for salon. Uh, okay. So that's actually already included in the, in the course. I've already okay. added that in. So. Do Jennifer, you want that what are you doing? Seminar, I am doing the 15 code types, we'll which is foundational. And uh, and I, I've got to say, there's been a ton of people that um, uh, have said that that's the first time that they were like, oh, that's why I do this with this dog and this with this dog. And how do I look at a coat and say, what's the right, have the right approach for that particular coat type? Recognizing the differences in coat types being able to discern fur versus hair. And and I, then I give you these categories of, you know, how, you know, just broad categories of how you groom them based on the coat type. It's a very, very, it's a great class. Great. I'm excited. I'm super excited to take the classes. <laughs> Why not? You know, because you get access to them. So I'm, I'm making, sure, I'm I'm making, making a new class. class. And my husband's listening to me type it in. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, I want to take this class. He's yeah. like, I want to take the class. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to take the Barbara Bird class because I have never taken a Barbara Bird class. And oh my gosh, I mean, talk about a legend. I am lucky and blessed enough to have been uh, trained by Barbara on several different occasions because I live in the same state as her. And she was gracious enough when I worked for the pet club to do a full on all day class for all our groomers. 
So I have been working with, with Barbara on and off for quite a while, and she is a, a, a knowledge and she yeah. is not for the faint of heart. I'll tell you no, that. No, she is not. No, she, she is, is not. Uh, but she, if you walk away from her class and you don't learn something, right. you were not even paying attention to anything. You must have been on your phone the whole time. Right. Because right. she she throws so much knowledge at you that it's hard to to gain everything. That's why these are great because you've got what two weeks afterwards to continue yeah. to watch and go back. Yeah. So it, it'll it'll be amazing. It, it's yeah, really I'm excited. Amazing. It's the first time a, a, a summit has been focused on skin and coat. Yes. So it's yeah. not little trims. It's not anything else. It's not creative. It is skin right. and coat, and I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'm so excited. Lots well, of great right, ladies. ladies. Wrap me up here. All right, we gotta wrap up. <laughs> Bye. I will see you girls next, ladies, Enjoy next week. Enjoy the sunshine in Tampa. It's snowy and icy in Chicago. And everywhere else in the north. I'm happy to be here. All right. I will see you, ladies, next week. Have a good week. Bye. Happy German, everyone. Everybody. And we will see you soon. Bye. See you Have later. a good night.